show you the March 26th meeting of the Honorable Finance Committee. Um, let me just start out by giving you the agenda for tonight. Um, we have, um, I'm going to skip the minutes at least right now, and we'll go right to um, Commissioner on Disability because we have representatives here. So we'll do that. I'm going to take advantage of Christine being here um, for also the opioid settlement in case there are any additional questions. I don't think we would have any, but since you're here, I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, then we're going to go to, then we'll cover the Historic District Commission um, budget request. Um, and then um, we're going to go do insurance, um, take advantage of Altoski being here and he won't be here next week. We also have to take a revote on pensions, uh, a quick revote. Um, um, and then um, I would like to dedicate a part of tonight's meeting to talk about the override. And whatever other time we have left, we'll deal with the miscellaneous warrant articles, DPW, composting, whatever we can get done tonight. So that will be the agenda. So with that, uh, welcome people from the Disability Commission. Could you introduce yourself? And then just, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Tim, ADA coordinator. Chris Carpenter, the um, Disability Commission co-chair. And Christine Bonjourno, Health and Human Services. So you have a budget ask of $25,000. Yes. So I'll just, if you could just quickly explain what, what the money is for. Um, do you want to pass that over? Do you have copies? Uh, I just have the one. Okay. I have okay. it up on the screen. Uh, um, yeah, so basically, thank you much, uh, so much for having us. Um, uh, oh, no. my bad. My bad. Here we go. There we go. Uh, thank you all for having us. Uh, thank you for your support the past few years of this budget. Um, We've had a chance to review it. We've broken this down pretty much into four buckets, uh, areas that we see this money going to. Uh, admin and supplies, ADA improvements in general, uh, staff and training, and then program and events. Uh, so last year, or 23, we had about 1,500 for outreach materials, emails, printing, newsletters, things like that. Uh, the ADA improvements around town that we've identified. Uh, Automatic swing door opener for the select uh, office inner door. Um, purchasing of two floating beach wheelchairs to be used at the town reservoir. Uh, covering some equipment and uniforms for a top soccer uh, accessibility program. Um, we have 5,000 for a language access project uh, and wayfinding assessment. So essentially um, wayfinding throughout town hall. How do people navigate it? Um, how is that? being done in a better, uh, more accessible way. Uh, we have uh, 2,500 for communications board. Um, so what that is, I should have handouts for uh, folks if they're not familiar with that. Uh, so the communication board, there actually is one at the um, playgrounds near the Ed Burns um, hockey uh, arena, as we call it. Um, so this is a large, a uh, wooden board that has different verbal cues and pictures associated with it. Um, so people, kids, and uh, caretakers of children at the playground who are either nonverbal, uh, neurodivergent, can still communicate with each other. Um, so kids, for instance, can say, play and ball, or climb and swing, things like that. Um, the of these things are really cool. Um, one of the things that has come up a lot uh, in my very little time of being the ADA coordinator um, in particular, is how kids do not have the education to interact with um, other disabled children or adults, um, and kind of giving them that space and that opportunity and the means to do that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, some money for the Robbins uh, Library automatic doors uh, to fix those. Uh, staff and training, we have uh, employment discrimination uh, and internal investigations. Um, that's for the, for the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. Um, basically, the first training would be for how to identify uh, disability accommodations as well as despair treatment, uh, harassment, things like that, religious accommodations. Uh, and the other one is just a little bit higher, uh, more involved um, continuation on that training. Uh, and lastly, we have programs and events. Uh, 
uh, we are having on April 30th, uh, Resources and Connection Fair. And what this is going to be is uh, getting folks together from many different departments across town, organizations, Arlington um, Eats, Housing Authority, um, having some time at town hall for folks to come in and really have everyone that they may need to talk to um, all in one place and can get guidance. Um, so for instance, if they have issues with a specific disability issue, uh, I can be there if they need you know, get signed up for SNAP. We have folks from uh, Council on Aging who can help them with that, uh, things like that. And for the uh, fiscal year 24, we're just hoping that we'll have more uh, capacity for more outreach, really getting out into the community more. Um, there's some things for AD coordinator certificate training for myself. Uh, and then we have 4,000 for disability events, um, town day and other related celebrations, things like that. Um, if anyone has any questions or particular areas they want to focus on. Could you tell us more about the disability events? Yeah. What, what's what, what do you would expect? And um, and you if you're asking for a thousand dollars more for outreach, and you could just expand on on those efforts that you expect. Yeah, of course. Um, so for the events, we're hoping to have the resource and connections fair. Um, you twice a year type thing. Um, so we'll have this one in April, and then ideally have something in the fall. Um, not conflicting with town day too much. Um, and other events, really, I think working with our community outreach and engagement coordinator, um, how do we create other opportunities uh, in the town for folks to get resources, information, things like that? Um, I don't know exactly how those will work out, but I'm hoping to be able to, in the next coming months, really work with the DI team. Um, to put that stuff together. Um, and outreach and materials, again, as my position grows uh, and I'm here for longer, it's I anticipate we'll be turning out more stuff, uh, more email lists, um, newsletters, things like that. Uh, make sure get out for the time. Why, why would Why would some of this not be covered under the DEI budget? Uh, what, which yeah. pieces are you? Uh, well, the, we have the, the training um, and then um, various events that you're talking about. I know that we have about $38,000 in the DEI budget for training and consulting. So, what? I guess well, this training is specific for the ADA coordinator. So I think the idea was that we would train the, D the ADA coordinator out of the Disability Commission funding. Can you speak up a little bit? Sure. The ADA coordinator, uh, we're looking to take that funding out of the ADA, the, the Disability Commission budget, the DEI budget. Um, in the past, we've used that funding to train all town staff. Um, and I think that that's the goal is to continue to do some more of that work. Questions? Grant? Thank you. Um, I'm interested about the events, um, particularly if you get very difficult sometimes to organize a social activity with people who are inherently kind of not so social. So. Um, what kind of activities do you have uh, planned to be conducted at these events that kind of enhance these people's uh, communication rather than their adults communicating with each other? Sure. Um, so I would like to have uh, a fall time resources and connection fair similarly. Um, so what we do, we'll be doing in April. Um, really, I think making an impact at Town Day. The commission was not at Town Day this year. Um, and you know, in the past, people have talked about uh, the commission not being there, and, and how do we get more fun events um, and people to come out. And I was talking to one of the co chairs um, last week at the uh, Arlington Reads Together event. Um, and he had mentioned that years ago that they had invited um, some speed braille readers to come to Town Day um, and kind of show off you know, 
to highlight and also celebrate uh, you know, the disability committee. So it's not just, you know, we have braille printouts and you can feel them, but you can have someone there actually showing you how this is how they interact and how they operate in the world and how they can be successful in that and make it a little fun. You know, it's not just take this pamphlet or take this keychain that has our name printed on it. Um, something a little bit more exciting and I guess memorable. They've also, um, the commission has also in the past hosted a disability career fair um, with the state and they've had you know, four, about 400 people come through the doors and this was held at town hall. It was like a regional employment fair. And I think that's a, you know, with, with the end of COVID, we're hoping to, to reinvigorate that program. Um, so that would obviously be another key piece because there are so many um, agencies looking to fill jobs and it's, um, you know, a, a very uh, great group to, to reach out to. Grant, yeah. uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm kind of a nuts and bolts type guy, mostly nutty, but um, what kinds of activities? The only thing I heard was a career fair. I mean, what type of activity? It's okay to say we don't have any plan, but if you do have any plan, I'm interested in what kinds those are. Sure. Uh, there have been, um, I think they're called vision walks or sight walking. Um, and these are events where you can have folks come in and they'll be blindfolded or given sight uh, impairing goggles um, and are led around town to see how a person who doesn't have uh, sight interacts with the town. Um, I think that's really important because I can highlight, you know, how many times you and I might cross a crosswalk and not think a second thought of anything uh, and how that might be a little terrifying um, without your, your those to see. Um, things like that. I don't have, I've only been here for a few months. Um, I'm new to the disability world, and so I'm kind of learning as I go, but it's great to have a resource with Grace and other commissioners um, who have been here for a while and have kind of that, that history and, and ideas that we're getting put out there as well. Having some sort of background or uh, experience with that, um, that's great activity for the people who don't have disabilities to understand what it's like. But it's a zero activity for anybody who has a disability. So it'd be great if you could kind of focus on some of those activities, especially, I mean, it's difficult, but there are out there that help them actually interact. Yeah, of course. But so I mean, it, it's, it, it's partly Thank also uh, a way uh, a way to uh, uh, raise awareness. Right. Oh, sure. Absolutely awareness, but it's not helping them. Well, well the other. It, it does help if no one knows. Uh, what the problems are. Oh, so. absolutely. Fully agree. Thank Brian? you. Brian? Um, following up a little bit along the lines of what Grant was going at, um, what's the numbers of people that you would have to deal with, either with disabilities or people without disabilities that are inquiring about it? Uh, inquiring about these events? Or? Well, inquiring that come to your events and that you're having interaction with. Sure. Um, so we have had uh, a fairly steady group of volunteers for the commission meeting itself. Um, in terms of the straight up number of folks who could come to this event, I, I couldn't say. I think also things, you know, there's the, the commission and, and then Tim. And um, so, um, and Tim interacts with people who are looking for certain pieces of information. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are the, the, the events that hopefully we'll be able to uh, move forward with for the commission in the coming year. Okay, let me rephrase it. In using $25,000 worth of the town's resources, what numbers of people would you expect to reach out to? Uh, the hundreds. I, I mean, I, I think that the, the budget is clearly showing that there are upgrades to systems in town in addition to just events. I think events come second to, um, you know, fixing the library doors. And, and, and when people say, why aren't these items in the capital plan? I mean, they are, right? Repairing uh, our doors, those items are in the capital plan, but they may be a few years out. And so the struggle is um, as a department head, so if I identify um, something that is, an issue within my building, I would let facilities know, and it may not be, it may be a few years before it's repaired or fixed, and there's a, an interim 
repair, but it doesn't always address the issue. If any of you have seen the doors at the Robbins Library and you've tried to use the paddle, you'll see that they, they work sometimes and sometimes they don't. Um, and that's frustrating for people that are mobility impaired. And we have a significant number of residents in our community that are. And to be able to have those individuals voice those concerns to department heads and the department has come to the Disability Commission to say, I, I, I have this issue and I need help, um, to have that funding available immediately is helpful. Um, so I, I think just from a department head perspective, to be able to immediately identify an issue and have it repaired for such short money, $3,000 to fix the library doors, um, it's, it's just, it's invaluable to the, to the community that's, that it serves. Um, you know, I think the other issue is uh, there was the select, the, the select board office doors. The exterior door was, uh, there was a paddle too, but then people couldn't get into the interior door, which um, again, that was in the capital plan that was identified in the, um, the assessment, the, the, um, the community assessment of all of our spaces. ADA spaces in town, but it's 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 scheduled further out. But that needed to be done in order to allow access to that space, um, so that people can start going back into those chambers. And so, being able to pull from this budget was was extremely helpful. And you know, the the floating wheelchairs. I think that was another issue that was brought to the commission, and it was something that, you know, the 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 Parks and Rec Commission says yes, we'll put it into the capital plan, but we're not going to get that funding for. You know, it could be two years, it could be five years. So I think to be able to have a commission that can hear from the community um, the issues that they're living with, and then for the commission to be able to say, yes, we are going to fund that. That's a priority for us. Um, for from what I see, it's just been invaluable. So there are some events that happen, but I think the, the majority of this funding really is identifying issues and, and addressing them immediately. So that our people that are living with disability and mobility impairments can, can continue with care. So if that's the case, then would you expect this to reoccur next year? Expect, I'm sorry. The, the, the budget request. Do would you expect to have a request $25,000 next year? It is helpful, yes. I think, I think we see this 25,000 as um, being able to, to plug the, the gaps, to, to plug the holes in, um, identified areas and, and they never go away. We're always seeing um, needs, so. Um, Charlie, the Jennifer, and then Danny. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Madam Chair. Uh, Chair. Um, so Christine, first of all, I think I wanna say that I, I think you're one of the best department managers we have in town. And uh, I, I really- from Charlie, thank you. Quite an honor to Thank you. Um, and, and I admire you know, what you've done in so many different areas. But what you just described here is, is basically circumventing the procedures and the rules and the practices, the good management practices of the town. And, and you know, we have a facilities department to maintain the facility. We put a lot of effort in the town to create that facilities department. And we have a capital plan which is set up, you know, there's a, I can't remember the psychologist's name. Um, oh, there's a famous, uh, you know, German psychologist or whatever, who had this theory of delayed gratification, you know, that maturity, personal maturity arises out of delayed gratification. And that's the, that's the very essence of capital planning is that, you know, I, I delay my fire truck so that somebody else can get their dump truck or the, you know, you're, you're trading off in a communal sense the priorities of the things that you need so that everybody can benefit. And what you've just described goes completely against that. And I just have a lot of problems with it. Uh, thank you. Um, so I I guess I have to disagree with Charlie respectfully. Um, I, I think that we, we do this a lot, right? So in the facilities department and in DPW, there are pots of money that are available for people with really specialized knowledge of that particular need. Um, and so, you know, I appreciate that you're coming to us with a level of funding. You know, we know that that's effectively a cut because of inflation. Um, but I think, you know, you likely you also have to make decisions. Likely the things that are requested of you are, are greater than you have resources. And so you're 
you know, given your specialized knowledge or making decisions. Um, I have a couple of questions. But one is, you've actually had a couple events that I wish I could have gone to. One was the event showing what it's like to be disabled in Arlington, but I thought it, it conflicted with, with this meeting, so I couldn't go to it. <laughs> um, and then, of course, um, Judy's uh, Herman, yeah, who was supposed to, who was personally died right before the event happened. Um, so I have a couple questions. One is about grants. So one of the sort of things up there says that one of the great advantages of having this money is that you can use it to match grants. So I'm just curious about the uh, grant funding over the last couple of years. And then I'll just ask my final question, which is that last year we did a $5,000 lead finding assessment. So I'm just curious, do you think this year you'll be using, looking for ways to put into place those recommendations from that assessment? Sure. Um, for the grants, uh, in September, I applied for a uh, grant for the MOD department to repay the uh, town hall annex um, parking lot. Um, unfortunately, it was not accepted. Uh, and then in November, I applied for one for actually to get the floating beach wheelchairs. Uh, that was particularly a grant to increase the physical activity, um, healthy lifestyle living of disabled folks um, and uh, those in lower income areas and areas of color. Um, Arlington is not those two things, right. unfortunately, and I can not bend the truth, but I can present the data of saying, you know, the res is in a particularly lower income area, particularly a higher uh, person of color living area. And it would really go a great way to get these two beach, quoted beach wheelchairs and they would say, well, that's great. You're still 80% white town and don't need the money. So I'm not gonna fund it for you. But it's great that we still have this money to, when that's not an option, you can still have these, um, these projects that we can complete. And when they're identified and we think they're important. Um, I'm sorry, what was the well, The second one was at the wayfinding assessment, which you did last year. Oh, the wayfinding? I was not aware of that, um, so I can obviously take a, you take a look at what was done. Um, yeah, I just started in okay. September. So. Yes, okay, <laughs> yeah. great. Thank you. But, uh, for clarification for me, the last couple of years, have you gotten any grant money? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't have the list, but yes, there have been grants that we have received um, from the state. I think it was 50000 last meatball. year. These, yeah, actually $50,000 <laughs> to fund the meat boards and all the... Um, town spaces. There have been a few years of um, funding requests that have gone to MOD. And, um, this latest one was another, uh, you know, something that was pulled from the capital plan and apply, we applied um, to the state for. Um, but that's that's really the one of the goals of Tim's position is to, to pull projects and apply for state and federal dollars um, to leverage, you know, as much as we can um, and to save the capital budget as much as we can. Are you finished that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my recollection is there's some history to this funding level that we at some point were asked to provide the commission with its own budget because the commission was not actually receiving the kind of attention to the solutions and issues that they had that we were required to provide under APA and that this money was actually money that we needed to fund them with, like to meet legal obligations or obligations under the law. I don't think this is nice to have money. I think it's money we're required to provide to the commission to meet these needs. Um, so in that sense, it's not circumventing the capital budget. I think that the mere fact that some projects that could have been funded by the capital budget are able to be forwarded faster because of this pot of money isn't a misuse of the system, it's a use of this pot for some very practical um, uh, things. And I don't remember when we did that, but I'm interested to hear, Christine, that you're able to leverage it. I assume that you do use it as leverage when you apply for grants. Mm -hmm. We'll fund half if you fund the other half, so on and so forth. Yes. And so, you know, similar to um, CDG funding for housing, you're probably leveraging these dollars, you know, two for one or something along like those lines. Um, so it seems like an effective use of the funds. And then I would just um, add the thought that 
it sounds to me like some of the things that you funded in 2023 weren't things that could wait two or three years for people who needed access to select board meetings, to libraries, so on and so forth. And the idea that for what seems to me like very short money compared to some of our large capital projects, we could make something accessible quickly uh, seemed like a good idea. Here. So sorry that was mostly a speech and not a question. I have some um, language from the last finance committee report regarding these, this um, budget, if you wanted me to share that. Sure. Okay. So um, one of the notes is um, under the funding from last year is that under state law, the town is authorized to allocate to the Disability Commission all fines collected by the town for handicapped parking violations. Um, since FY20, the town has appro uh, appropriated 25000 per year to the Disability Commission, an amount approximately equal to the fines collected by the town for handicap parking violations in FY 2019. This 25,000 appropriation is in lieu of the town allocating such fines to the Disability Commission as it is authorized to do pursuant to MGLC 40 section 22G. Um, and then um, the Disability Commission has used the majority of its appropriations since FY 20 on repairs to town hall to improve accessibility software to improve the accessibility of the town website and for ADA and MCAD training for town staff. The finance committee has offered to provide a liaison to the disability commission to assist with planning and any budgeting questions and or questions related to potential expenses under the town's 2020 ADA transition plan. How much have you collected in fines from the to 2022? Do you have those numbers handy? Uh, I don't think you have those numbers. I don't, I don't have the printout. I don't know if you do, but it was it's last. not. We had discussed it. Yeah. So um, we all had a meeting last week and, and discussed those. And the, the funding went up, I believe it was 2018 or 2019. It went up to 14,000. And that was at the same time when the town was hiring um, additional parking control officers. And we were going along and we had received a lot of feedback from our community that um, people were parking illegally in parking spaces and um, in, in handicapped parking spaces. So at the time, the chief was saying, all right, we're getting more parking control officers. Um, we were all really excited about getting more funding in and then COVID hit and nobody was parking anywhere and um, things just went south. And um, there were, I think, maybe $8,000 collected and then it went down to six, maybe. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it went down to 2000 So it's um, unfortunately, we're in a situation right now where um, we're not at 25,000, and um, I think that was our what we expected based on sort of where we were going at that point. But we never uh, we never hit that, and there were reasons for that. Obviously. Before COVID, it was hit 14,000. 14, mm -hmm. and then the parking control officers were hired, and there was a commitment from the chief to make sure that HC spots were available when people needed them for HC parking. So. Yeah. Um, so does the money that you don't spend in a given year go back into the general fund? Yes. Okay. Um, and the expenses for things like getting doors to operate, uh, you know, I have to, yeah, I have to agree with Annie. I mean, that's legally, you have to have doors that are going to open for people. You can't wait until the capital budget says, oh, we're going to do that in three years. That has to be done ASAP. Um, that, you know, but then it's really easy to go down a slippery slope of do we really do we really need something like the floats or is that something that should go into a capital campaign. Um, so I don't know what to do with those types of issues and questions, because then it becomes nice that potentially nice things to have. Um, and the question is what's a nice thing to have versus what's legally required. Uh, Sophie. So sort of piggybacking on that but on a different take, the commission is, is just that, a commission. It's not a town department. So wouldn't liability for doors, the town is liable under the ADA Act um, for not funding it. And we're lucky that the commission is willing to spend their money on this and they have no obligation to, right? Whereas the floats, correct me if I'm wrong, is exactly what the commission is there to provide it for 
people in response to a community need. So I would, I guess my question to the commission is these fixes that you're making, uh, you're sort of coming to the town's rescue, right? Because they're not putting it at the front of the list at the capital planning when in fact legally we're, the town is subject to liability if they don't put it at the top of the list and fix it immediately, no? No, so we have a trend. I'm sorry. Are you finished? So yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. We have the ADA transition plan and it identifies all of the problem areas in town and there are a lot. So it's just a matter of prioritizing. The commission is a commission of the town and therefore when they identify and people come to the commission with identified needs that may be funded in future years, that's when the commission says, nope, let's, let's do this now. And if there's small amounts, it's doable. I mean, they're not going to be able to do, you know, add a, a fifteen thousand dollar ramp to every building in town. It's not. That's not do necessary. we know? Do we know if any of these other town budgets are? Do they commit to a certain amount towards that plan to instituting fixes that have been identified yes. every year? And the they capital budget, I believe it's a hundred thousand. Okay. CDBG gets a hundred thousand. It's never enough. Towards handicapped ADA compliance. Yes. Yes. Also, I, I also I just said that uh, with the, the library doors that as a, it wasn't on the ADA the, the transition plan because I think it was working that day. I go a lot and half the time it's not working. Um, so right. some of these things they don't get into the the, the plan, but they're really important. One more follow-up. I remember maybe it was pre-COVID because Retro Burger was still open. Someone from the ADA, or somebody from the Disability Commission was going um, mm -hmm. to that strip over there talking about access because there's a little step between the sidewalk and when you get into these restaurants and obviously if you're in a wheelchair, you can't. Uh, do you know whatever happened with that survey that was being done of the businesses? Because I had talked to somebody. It was probably Darcy. Right, and she was going around talking about putting little ramps or giving the businesses little ramps to put on those steps so they can actually give access to those with wheelchairs. Do you know what happened with that? I don't know. No, we'll have to we'll look into it. But that was definitely Darcy. So I just we'll follow up. Run that. into her there outside sure. of River. Pre-COVID is simple. <laughs> it feels like it's different. <laughs> but it, that was the type of project yeah. where yes. the Disability Commission was going out talking to the restaurant owner saying, you have this problem here, let's find a solution. Um, which is great. Other questions? Paul Jones? Uh, and now I'm curious, I'm sorry if I, I missed this, but uh, I'd like to know about your relationship with the Capital Planning Committee. Have you gone to them with requests and expressed the urgency and and, 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 the, and the legal requirements and they said, no, we have to put that off? Or what, what's that interaction been? The planning department puts the request in. So that request goes through planning. Um, the planning director typically will work with that. Forward. Okay, but have, have they have, have you made specific requests and, and capital planning has said no, we can't do that? Or they ask for a certain amount and then that I think it's a hundred thousand this year. I, I mean, I don't know, Jennifer, did you say it was two hundred? Yeah. That's what usually yeah, hundred thousand, and then it's it's right. taking that funding and, and allocating it out to the to the top projects. So the planning department manages that. We work with them, obviously. And, and they're aware of the urgency and the legal requirements. Of course. Right. They need to be. Yeah. Okay. Shirley and then Carol. Uh, yes, thank you. So the first thing I want to say is that the uh, psychologist was Abraham Maslow. Secondly, I just I mean I, I know there's not much detail in the in the fiscal 24 plan here, but looking at the items in the in the uh, 23 expenses, they are expenses like the you know the floats at two thousand dollars each are not capital items. And um, on the other hand, um, the, the number one priority for the capital planning department uh, commit, committee is the health and safety of, of um, citizens and employees of the town. And so if something is really affects that, it goes to the top of the list. And if it hasn't gone to the top of the list, that's a management failure on the part of the town. I don't know whether it's in your department or the planning department or the town manager, but that's the way it's supposed to work. And 
And um, I mean, I think some of these items are legitimate for the disability department or the commission or whatever that be spending things on. But when it comes to items that are facility repairs or capital items that affect the health and safety of people in the town, that should get management attention across the board. And if it doesn't, there's something wrong with the system. Um, so I, I, I just have to stand by my earlier comment that we should not be circumventing the system. We should be making it work. And, and to the extent that the, the finance committee or I can help, let me know because I would be happy to, you know, talk to somebody politely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So when, when people were throwing around the hundred or 200,000, that specific money is for improvements for um, to say that and that's for this coming year and or year after year. It's each year. It's it's um, that amount. Okay, so we are at least spending two hundred thousand on issues in town related to this. Right. I'm, I'm getting a little confused here. Um, so from this because you can't hear all the way over here when you're just talking about everything. So it's my understanding that. A hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a year is are being allocated through the capital plan. Is that is that a correct statement? I think there's two cap. One is in the capital plan. One is somewhere CBG, else. Like the CBG, CBG. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's going to be an allocated this. What is different? I would say eighteen thousand for the twenty twenty four budget. That's not in the two hundred. I that's why I'm like, is are these for emergency repairs that haven't come up or I can't just trying to yeah. get it all together here. They, they're typically the, the one-off um, accessibility issues that may not, may not be in any plans um, because we, we work off of the ADA transition plan, which the town invested in, I want to say it was six or seven years ago. And that's kind of like our roadmap for repairs and upgrades and ADA compliance across the town. And that plan allows us to spend 10, 15 years on making upgrades. Every year, something is identified that maybe wasn't part of the plan because, for example, the library doors weren't necessarily broken the day that they did that inspection. So that that's something that's not in that ADA transition plan. So that would not be part of that hundred thousand. So, yeah, I mean, I think it, it you know maybe sign, the signage at town hall it doesn't have braille at the height it needs to be at. It wasn't maybe identified in the plan. Um, or it is, but it's way you know further out in the plan. But it's something that the commission has heard is an issue that needs to be addressed. I don't know if that's signage, but if something breaks in town, you can come to this committee for a, for a reserve fund transfer immediately and get it fixed. Mm -hmm. um, I think it sounds like you're anticipating waiting for something to happen that hasn't happened yet. Yet we are throwing a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars towards it. And what I'm putting out to you is, I think, as these events occur, that, you, that come to you, that it's an emergency, you can come to this committee, we'll give you the money. I mean, I don't know about the, eight, like I said, I don't know about authorizing this $18,000 that is not highlighted as to what it's for. I mean, you'd be surprised how many feet we stick in the fire over $500, which is unfortunate, but true. Um, and if something's really necessary, you know, you just, you can make an, uh, and we do it, we would do it year round too. If something happens, we have an emergency, not emergency meeting, we schedule a meeting, and it could be a Zoom meeting or whatever, and you get the funds immediately. Any other questions? <clears throat> Carolyn. Can we get a list of what's in the, um, the yeah. long range plan? The, the, tra the transition plan? Yeah, yeah. We can share that with the committee. That, that would be cool. It should be online. Going forward, it's 400 pages. <laughs> <laughs> is there something that says here's what the, what are the next you know top 10 yeah, things or what's up for this coming year for, yeah. just say this Probably. is the page right this page if you can send tara a link she'll put mm -hmm. it up on our, our in sharepoint so that we don't have access to it thank you all right um charlie just one one more question what does the transportation survey cost Um, I don't know. Where's the link? It's uh, for next year. Oh, the next year one. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. All right. 
Um, no further questions. All right. Um, opioids. I think these two can leave. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you both. Thanks, So we got a memo on the opioid settlement. Um, this, this was like a, a week or so ago. So I think everyone's heard that. I apologize. So this is the opioid settlement memo we got a week or two ago uh, when the town manager was here. He spoke briefly about it, and we've got a little bit more detail. Thank you. And I don't know if anyone has any questions, but if they do, we have a person here. Hopefully, who can answer any questions? And if we don't have questions, then then that's fine. Yeah. Is the memo in our SharePoint somewhere? It was emailed on again, I think. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Friday. Um, I can pull it up. That's all right. I can. Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, maybe. It's stated the twenty second. Yeah, I guess Thursday. Oh. Twenty. Oh. Oh, this one is here. Point. Do you have no, there it is. No? Do you have specific uses set up? They can probably do it in the memo uh, for the hundred and forty eight thousand. If you could run through those quickly. Sure. So in the memo, I outlined the process in order to spend one of the steps the state has required is that we receive town um, meeting approval in our form of government. Um, we have received 148 since the beginning of FY22, but it all came in July last year. <laughs> so the state system is a little behind. We also received some of the some of the companies that have settled, we received those up front. And then additional parties have settled. So the amount that we received is 148. We anticipate getting for about like an average of 40 to 41 thousand dollars per year for 16 years, um, which is a significant amount um, to to help really address this epidemic. Um, so the question, Al, was um, can you remind me the question again? I'm, I'm sorry. Do I know what? Well, we're, we're, we're you know, what are you planning to do with this money next year? Yeah, so in order, to, like I was saying, in order to spend it, we have to get town meeting approval. We have to uh, do a community needs assessment. So we need to assess the problem, which we're currently doing in our department. And we also then have to have a community forum in order to um, receive community feedback. Um, we have experience doing these types of projects. We um, received a federal grant and it was a part of our coalition, um, the Youth Health and Safety Coalition for a number of years. Um, where we did the same exact process, where we did a community health needs assessment, um, we developed a, a strategic plan, uh, so we received community feedback and, and began a process in order to start um, dealing with youth substance use. Um, this is a little different, but we, um, you know, we anticipate using this, I, I mean, we have to do that process before we decide, but I do know that some of the needs that I've seen so far um, our residents that are struggling with opioid use disorder, um, some of them are struggling to get access to um, sober living homes. So paying for scholarships, which um, there are seven areas that we're allowed to spend funds on. Um, we have a recovery coach currently that we have on contract um, through ARPA, which has been very valuable for people that are looking to understand systems. And um, he's been incredibly helpful. He actually works out of the police department. I anticipate using some of this funding also to continue that contract after the ARPA funds go away because I, I have I have found that to be very helpful. But again, I need to get community feedback before we can commit to funding any projects. Um, so it, it is um, it is important that we do that. We um, recently hired uh, made an offer to fill a vacant position at our department that will be managing this um, as well as a, a bunch of other grant funding that we receive as well. Any other questions? Annie. Oh, 
if I understand correctly what this model is saying, you cannot use this funding to fund current operations. It has to be funding something within these seven areas and it has to supplement and strengthen. It can't supplant. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Um, the town manager did ask if <coughs> funds would be directed to AYCC. I think that might have been a question here. Right. Um, we do see that there are families impacted by overdoses. And so um, when that does occur, um, we will be looking at uh, ways to support, you know, the trauma-informed care that we're, we're really promoting throughout all of our departments in town. Um, we're really looking at making sure we have either group work or we have clinicians that are available to address that. So there could be some funding put towards that if, for example, a family doesn't have insurance or is in between insurance or has high copay. So this funding could be used for AYCC. It's just we're not going to take it to fund a position, unfortunately. I'd obviously love to do that. Thank you. Um, so uh, we have to, the town will have to vote to authorize the spending related to this, uh, to this uh, funds that we're receiving. So we're receiving about 40,000 per year over a 17 year period. Um, is that something that the town has to vote on every single year or is it a one time vote for authorization for the 17 year period? So as it currently stands, it's every year there has to be an authorization of funds received. The comptroller has um, been provided information about there being two. Now, now the state has allowed two different options. So I'm letting the finance people decide which is best. Um, so it, it might be an annual town meeting approval. And I understand there are other state funds that require that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Charlie. So uh, thank you. Um, will, will these funds um, do they have to be spent in a given year to kind of be carried over? In other words, will there be some sort of a specialized account or reserve account so that you can mm -hmm. accumulate the funds if you have a larger demand of some sort? Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, I don't, I don't think I can spend 148,000 by the end of June this year. And so I, I think that the plan will be for um, communities to carry over. Many communities haven't even started this process. So I think um, the state is giving a lot of leeway. And because it fluctuates, it's difficult to, um, to have a lot of spending in one year and none, you know, less than the other. So I think by carrying it over, we can even it out. Other question? Thank you. Can you talk about a little bit more? So there's more of a process in front of you. Uh, can you talk about what sort of process you envision to like get the community feedback? Sure. So as I mentioned, the staff in the department yeah. now are working through yeah. uh, collecting data, doing an assessment. Um, the community input session, we anticipate doing probably some focus groups out in the community with specific populations, and then most likely a large community forum where we would invite the public in, and all of you would be invited, obviously, to help direct those funds based on the data. So here are our data, here are some model programs, what do we want to see? And it would likely be um, similar to other process, uh, for, you know, events we've had where we do small group tables and people can work through scenarios, um, sort of world cafe style. So that's that's what we envision. Okay. I don't know if that's what it, the final product would be. Thanks. Thank you. So you mentioned, um, thank you for all of this information, it's very helpful. You mentioned you recently made an offer to someone mm -hmm. who will be managing this, but is that, is, is it her salary? out of this? You no, know, there's a portion of that person's salary that will come out of a different grant. So the, the job, this is just going to be a small portion. This is a massive, um, in the beginning, this will be a massive program that I can't do. Okay, so I'm assigning it to this role. Um, this person has a, a whole host of other duties as well. But this piece, um, because the person we've hired is coming to us with a lot of experience in this field. Um, I think we'll be able to really take this and run with it. So I'm excited for that. But I, I don't see this funding going to that um, role because it's already funded elsewhere. Thank you. Um, no? This will all, all of this money will be spent through the Health and Human Services Department? Correct. However, we don't work in just a silo. We partner with other, with the police department, right, the fire sure. department. I'm just like, is this, you know, <clears throat> 
Christine, mechanically, for example, in, in the health and human services budget, we have an offset for the Bureau of Substance Abuse, things like that. I, it almost seems like we should include the expenditures in the health and human services budget and then add the money from the opioid fund into as an offset to that, just to you know, treat yeah, the same as other, yeah, as other that, things. That, yeah, I think we like the cemetery fund and the ambulance fund, they're all treated as offsets in various budgets and the expenditures are all shown in the budget. The, the problem with that is being the, if it's in the budget, it has to go back to free cash closed out at the end of June. Mm -hmm. If it stays in the Warren article, it could continue from year to year. Is that what happens with the ambulance yeah. fund? Or some of the, I'm sorry? Is that what happens with the other, like the ambulance fund and the cemetery fund and things like that? I believe they can, you know, same with the commissions and committees. That money. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just trying to make it consistent and transparent. Right. No, I understand that. Okay. It's just, if you have to hire any town employees, either permanently or temporarily, will these funds cover their benefits? Insurance, you, pension? You don't anticipate hiring um, employees. The, the recovery coach that we have on um, our team now is a contractor, so we're paying per hour. Um, so we, I don't anticipate hiring staff for this because it is, um, it fluctuates year to year. I, I just, I can't, um, and, and I don't feel that we're getting enough funding to pay for um, a salary, a person. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Anything? All right. Thank you very much. Good to see you all in person. How are you? Thank you. See you at town meeting. <laughs> yeah. And just remind people that what we just covered is Article 52 in the warrant. So we will um, take a vote on that later. Um, what next? Historic District Commission. Welcome. On the hot seat. <laughs> So welcome. Um, let's have you introduce yourself. Sure. And then um, talk about your request, which for fifty-seven fifty, right? Correct. Right. So I'm Steve McAlpha, chair of the Historic Districts Commission. Uh, we have seven historic local historic districts in town that encompass about 335 properties. Uh, commissions all volunteers, uh, 13 members, six at large, one from each of the districts. Um, we meet, well, usually we meet monthly, but during the pandemic, we've been meeting twice a month because of um, just constraints and having extended Zoom meetings. Um, we've gone back just recently because of those who have Zoom meetings. Um, we're all volunteers. We do employ an executive secretary to help us deal with our legal obligations for notice, putting in advertisements, communicating with um, residents of the district. Um, we rely a lot on the executive secretary, and actually the town relies on her a lot, too. We have the Historic District Commission, the Arlington Historical Commission, and the Historical Society. Most of the people in town government are confused by all those entities and where the dotted lines are. Um, Carol, our executive secretary, is the go-to person. People know if you call her, you will get a response from somebody. So we're carrying some, I, I don't mean to say anyone else is shirking, but um, uh, through the efforts of um, uh, the Historic District Commissions, we're covering some of the questions that are coming in from the building department, from uh, historical commission uh, covered properties. Um, so that's a very important um, role that we're playing <clears throat> and that she's playing for us. Everyone else is uh, uh, operating, uh, all the other commissioners are volunteer. We've been at 5,100 for many years. Um, we've uh, really, you know, really focusing our expenditures on legal obligations and things that have to happen. Um, what we have planned to do, and we're in negotiations or discussions with the Department of Public Works, is to replace a lot of the um, signs identifying historic districts in town. Um, we had they 
the current ones um, had been installed back in the 90s or very early 2000s. Many of them are gone. The ones that remain, if you walk down Central Street across from Town Hall, you can barely read the wording on the sign. It's so faded at this point. So what we were doing in order to do this as economically as possible is um, the town used to employ sign painters that don't anymore, um, would be us acquiring the signs ourselves and working with the Department of Public Works to do the installation as they had the manpower power available to do that. And they were agreeable to doing that. So that's the one time thing that I have down in our budget, but just on an ongoing um, uh, recurring expenditures, you know, we've been living close to that $5,100, maybe slightly below for a while. We're going over, uh, we'll be over this year. I did have one correction to make. I had asked the comptroller's office for current year to date fiscal 23 information. And what they sent was fiscal year 21. Uh, so the 4,892 that's listed there is really full year expenditures for fiscal, fiscal 21. Um, I got the information today from the comptroller for um, year to date fiscal 23 is $5,254. So we will have additional legal and advertising expenditures coming in for the remainder of the year. So we'll be over our current budget allotment. Questions? So how much were you asking for? 5750 $650 increase over our current budget. Annie? So I'm looking at the budget request here, and it looks to me like what you're saying is you're asking for $5,750 going forward, and then a prior year's transfer of $3,329. Do you actually have that $3,329 somewhere? That's in the fiscal that was transferred into fiscal year 2023. Okay. And our plan is to expend that amount on the signs and commit that this year. Okay. So we're not asking for re recurring funds, that amount recurring at any point in the future. All right. Then I'm not, then I'm misunderstanding your budget here because your budget says on this page, $9,079. So if you look at the recurring subtotal halfway down, yeah, the 5,918, that's kind of what we expect are recurring, what we're going to need in fiscal year 24. Right, and what is the one time line below that? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I listed that as fiscal year 24. It's This is for the remainder of fiscal year 23. We plan on giving the bonus to our secretary to reflect yeah. the double meeting she's been doing for the past two years. Okay. And the additional work and the sign replacement, which is out of current funds. I was just trying to explain that <coughs> um, current 3329, it was on the 20, one carryover, but it's really not the 21, it's the 24, it's in the 24 carryover. All right. But again, it's still 3329 is not 4,000. Right. So where's the rest of the 4,000 coming from? And, and 5750 isn't 5918. It's less than that. So you, you understand my dilemma here? Well, technically, you can't overspend your budget. In fiscal year 2023, mm -hmm. I, I apologize, this one time that's under 24 yeah. probably should be shifted over under fiscal year 23. That amount is appropriate in our fiscal year 23 budget. Okay, the fiscal year 23 budget was $5,100, correct? With a transfer. A transfer of? 3329. 3329. Okay. And so your recurring expenses in FY23 are how much? The estimate of what that recurring expense is is 5299. Okay. The actual budget out of Munis for current year to date is 5254. So 5254 plus 4000 
is 9,254. 8,254. 5,100 plus the 3,329 or 3,329 would be about $8,500. Okay, so about $8,500. And you're talking about spending over $9,000. If that $4,000 is FY23 money plus what you're estimating your recurring expenses this year to be. So we plan on spending year to day expenses of $5,254 yep. plus a, a little bit more, plus the $500 for the bonus for executive secretary and money on the signs. Okay. How mm -hmm. much money on the signs? Money on the signs is approximately $3,500. I'm still not sure that adds up to what you actually have. But. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're asking for enough money. Uh, well, nine, two, five, four. Again, this is um, I'm not asking for any more money for this year, and we may be a little bit short on being able to do all the signs. Right. In which case, we may do five signs rather than seven signs. Okay, so you understand you can't overspend your budget. Yes, that's all I'm trying to clarify. Oh, I, absolutely. Okay, great. We know we, so we can't overspend. In right. the, the, the preliminary estimate we've got is for five hundred dollars a sign. We're working with the historical commission that buys signs for houses all the time. We may be able to get them for four hundred dollars a okay. sign. But, all right. So then, let me ask you this: Yes, the recurring expenditures that you're adding up here to five thousand nine hundred eighteen. That's is that what you're estimating for FY twenty four? Yes. But you're only asking for five thousand seven hundred fifty. <laughs> right. You to Do you really want to ask for five thousand seven hundred fifty? What are you going to cut? Just tell us, just tell us what you want. No. Yeah, just tell us what dollar amount you actually need. Do you right. actually need five thousand seven hundred eighteen? All the legal expenditures fluctuate year by year. Right. We don't know exactly she wants, what it's going to be. want you to ask for $5,918. Ask for more money. <laughs> I want you to Seriously. ask for what you think you're actually going to spend. Right. We, I, I think that what we will actually end up spending next year because of the increase in all the different costs is going to be on the order of $5,900 to $6,000. $5,900 and... Two to six thousand. So if... if Okay. You asked me today what I would like the budget request to be, it would be even $6,000 to cover our English. <laughs> okay. Good. So then I think I, you can ask for $6,000. When I made the original request for $5,750, it was a guesstimate because I had no information from the comptroller's office. And I, of, of, but that's of the carryover, right? Well, it's year to date budget as well. Year to date, yeah. And you're under budget. Yeah. Okay. Year to date, the comptroller told me today we have spent or encumbered five thousand two hundred and fifty-four dollars. And what do you over budget? So we're can't. already over you budget, but we have a transfer. So to the extent we're going to have to mm -hmm. use some of that transfer money already in, that's going to be one last sign that we're going to be able to pay for because we know we can't go over budget. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, it took me a long time to get to where you're going. It's okay. <laughs> Understand. So the question before us is do you want to revise your act to six thousand dollars for fiscal twenty-four or do you want to leave it at fifty-seven fifty? No guarantee. I think realistically we'll going forward the legal required expenses and um it will be six thousand dollars based on the information available to me today. Okay. Yeah. I assume by transfer you mean from prior year budgets, prior year war articles. Yes. That's my understanding. Any other questions? Yes, Grant. The minor one. So, I think this. You're right about the signs, um, and you did get a quote. I because I you're going to get a sign for five hundred dollars. Uh, if that was a quote from DPW to paint them, that's great. But I think that's underestimating the replacement cost of the sign. But I don't know. Did I actually you? have a quote from a sign painter that does signs for historic districts for. Uh, three by two 
double sided sign for four hundred and ninety dollars, four hundred eighty five dollars a piece. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. There's hardware and other stuff that we'll have to add in. We'll under, we understand that we're living, we're working with the limit. And if we need additional money and we feel, feel that it is important, we will come back and ask for additional monies. Don't plan on it, but we know that we have to live within that limit. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Why don't we um, take a vote on um, the Commission on Disabilities to get that over with? Who is there a motion? So I move approval of their $25,000 budget request. Second. All right. Discussion. Any questions, discussion, comments? Brian? I'm back to I'm for giving them everything they need. I'm not sure that they really put that list in front of us. And if there are things that are desperately needed, if they brought it to the reserve as, as, a, as a reserve fund transfer, this committee would give it to them. They'd have the money next week. So I'm not sure about that $18,000. I, mean, I know there's a transportation study. They didn't know how much it was. But I'm not sure that it was really well thought out. That, that number seems like it got plucked out to add up to twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Grant, do you have your hand up? No, I'm oh. sorry, I didn't. All right. Any? Sophie, um, I, I'm really frustrated with um, with this budget. Not the twenty-five thousand of the commission per se, but I really feel like. It's and I, I'm not going to vote against it. I don't think because I I want them to spend the money on these things. But I think going forward, it just seems to me like it's basically being run by the Department of Inclusion and DEI or whatever the abbreviation is now. And I, they need that ADA coordinator. I, I talked to them last year. They, it, it's a huge help, but that he's basic. He's not on the commission. He's basically running and. The commission and spending the money and they just approve whatever budget he comes up with and it just bothers me when you look at the mission of the disability commission mm -hmm. online I, I just i don't know i'm just frustrated <laughs> i'm frustrated with it but i i mean i have a brother with disabilities that's so worth so i i want it spent I just so are you concerned that the disability commission is being railroaded in some way about the spending? Well, I don't know that it's always, I would like to see like when they need these funds for the doors, yeah. the town should be, they should be coming to us. It shouldn't be coming out of their budget. Their right. budget should be for making things even better. Right. It shouldn't be for making like to okay. fund the town's liability, right? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm seeing it as it's being used by the town and the town manager as the reserve fund for anything needed for ADA. And I don't feel like that meets its mission. And I don't think that's the goal of the commission. I think the goal should be to advise the town on making things better, not just meet the town's legal liability. So, so that's where my frustration comes from. Right. That maybe personal, maybe you're too emotional. No, no, no. But. <laughs> I mean, I, my advice would be, and I struggled with this when I was on the select board in dealing with the disability commission. And I'm, I'm sorry, just based on that experience, it was one that throw this comment out there. It sounds to me like the commission itself needs some training on how to think about this and how to assert their uh, correct control over this budget and what you know and how to push back. Well, and I don't know how that happened. I mean, when you look at when they have their meetings, it's like four to six in the afternoon, which limits when people. You know, that's why we have our meetings in the evening and stuff. I they have there are there is a town appointed. DPW, I think, department yeah. head is on the commission. I don't know. Right. right. There are people, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's a message to the select board. Maybe that there yeah. is. Some. I think it's a discussion with the select board in a direction to the town manager. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to team up with you on that right. because it's been a problem for a while. Right. And like I feel like last year. feel in control of their thing. Right. And then last year, we had, when, when we had an email from Julie 
the town manager's office saying that 25,000 was because of handicapped parking, and that's what it was. And then mm -hmm. when we pulled the numbers this year, it turns out it never right. was actually <laughs> that. So, mm -hmm. and like, okay, they're telling us one thing, and then if you look at the numbers, it's yeah. another. And, mm -hmm. I, I'm, but I'm not for not giving them, you know, right. they need money for good costs. Yeah. Charlie. So, um, thank you, Christine. Uh, I, uh, I'm strongly opposed to the way Christine Mangiaro described how this is being run. And I really think that uh, going by the facilities department or the capital plan, and these other organizations that are attached with doing some of these things, if every department did that, we would be in complete chaos. It's just, a, it's just bad management. So uh, I also note that $25,000 is not the number that we're collecting from the, from the park you know the penalties or whatever which is what we required by law to appropriate so i'm making a motion to reduce it from twenty five thousand to twenty thousand to number one uh be closer to what the collections are as is required by law and number two to send a message to uh, both uh, christine bongiorno and the town manager and the board of selectmen that uh, money counts so that's my motion is there a second to that motion second what, what was the amount, Charlie, that you? 20,000. 20, 20, 20, okay. I was going to go lower. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn. Go ahead, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go lower. Um, I'm going to go lower. 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 i am going to one, have a list of what's on the list with the 200000 two hundred thousand, two $100,000. And then two, as you were saying, that, that they need to have a, um, be able to present us what their um, description, what their purpose is mm -hmm. and how they're honoring that purpose. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't want to, I want them to get better by next year, but I also want to send a message that, you know, something has, so some things need to change. Okay. I mean, my concern right. is. Wait, wait. Sorry. I'm kind of, um, yeah. The. Uh, Annie, why don't you just go ahead and kind of take away what I was going to say? Go ahead and I kind of I, I distracted what I was coming up with. So. Sorry. I'm going to speak out of turn. So do I. Uh, I'll finish when you're done. All right. I, I just want to say that I. You know, my concern is that we empower the Disabilities Commission, who do have a mission, and who I just know from my time on the select board when I met with them, feel very disempowered. And I don't know why that is. They need some help understanding how they can communicate their needs to and get satisfaction from the various parts of the town that are supposed to be providing it. Like, I don't know if they know what's on the list for the 200,000 or the CDBG money. And I'm not sure that they know that they should be playing a role in defining what are the most urgent issues and so on and so forth. Maybe that's in the transition plan and they agree with the transition plan. But I hate to send to them a signal that we're going to cut their budget if it's going to make them feel disempowered. That said, if we're going to vote the $25,000 that I'm suggesting that we vote, then I agree with Sophie, we have to talk to them about what their actual mission is and how to push back on, no, that should be in the facilities budget, no, that should be in the capital budget. Oh, by the way, cap budget people, you got to put urgent issues at the top of the list, even if it means shifting something else back or how do you ask for a reserve fund transfer to deal with a crisis? So, you know, I'm of two minds. I'd like to give them the full amount of money, but I do think we have some work to do here to help them understand what's in their purview and what other people should be doing there. Does that make sense? I hear you, Annie. I just don't know how much we take on as the finance committee. Uh, Grant, you. Yes, thank you. Um, again, with the I guess the point we should take a film clip of the 10th graders presentation. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
April. Because they were the best prepared. They knew what they were asking for. They had it planned out. I mean, so I'll give, I'll, again, have to give some, all of these people that are so, you know, there's less money, but it's just so, um, so I understand he's only been there a couple of months, um, mm -hmm. but he couldn't describe an activity that was already in a past event. Um, so I, again, lack of planning and the lack of preparation just for the meeting for the ask, I think kind of indicates that there's a lack of planning. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I want to, uh, I'm again, conflicted on the vote. Um, I, just like you said, you know, I want to send a message, but I don't want to cheat, to cheat anybody out of any money. I question about how well the money is spent. So um, conflicted by leaning toward the 20K. And hopefully next year, the more experience, you'll have a better plan than maybe can accurately describe some of the activities other than educational. If memory serves me, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I can remember we had a discussion and a number of years ago, in the disability commission come in, they were asking for thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, not twenty-five thousand dollars. And we, as a board, through a discussion with the then town manager, we come up with this twenty-five thousand dollars. And unbeknownst to us, that twenty-five thousand dollars kind of got etched in stone year after year after year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never went up; it didn't go down. <laughs> um, and the other part of it is. The Disability Commission itself turns over quite frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. it just mm -hmm. And that's part of the situation is, going back to your point, Andy, about training for the Disability Commission mm -hmm. themselves. Well, every time they start doing that, there's a, there's a new, new group, a new group, a new group, and that's part of the conflict. Um, so I kind of go with Charlie just to give them kind of a notice we're going to lower it to 20,000 rather than 25,000 because I mean, we've sat here for a number of years now and had the same discussion. But over where is the money being spent and why are we doing it this way? So that, that's just my um, historical. Anyway. Any other, um, Rebecca? Um, thank you. I, I would just note that the one thing that they do specify for this coming year. For the 18,000, sorry, there are two things that they say for the 18,000, and that is a transportation survey and an automatic door audit. And an automatic door audit seems to me to be a different thing than actually fixing the automatic door. So I guess I'm conflicted about, I don't love what they did for fiscal year 2023, because those didn't seem like the right things. But, and there's not enough specificity in the current year. But the two things they have, identified seem more reasonable than what they did last year. Mm -hmm. So I'm conflicted because I, I agree definitely with this point that the, there's something, the doors of the library are broken. Facilities are, should just, should just fix them. Um, but insofar as they told us what they're gonna do this year, those seem better to me than what they did last year. Thank you. Sorry. And I'll just add on to that. You know, I just have a problem with, you know, the, this commission, you know, their job and responsibility is not building management. That's that should be the function of you know facilities along with general uh, the town's general management. So the fact that they have to take it upon themselves, even if it's relatively minor damage, again, from my perspective, I think that that should be something that you know should be thought of not using this budget. It should come out of facilities. It should come elsewhere. It doesn't make sense that again a board like this is. Um, is uh, has to use money to be able to do these repairs. So, and I, I just put out uh, this thought that we're talking about empowering this commission. This is under Christine Bongiorno and the ADA coordinators under the DEI department, which we've increased in both personnel and funding. Um, and um, they have a lot of money in their budget, which has increased substantially. It was a what, 13 and a half percent jump from last year. Um, so I, I feel like it shouldn't be us. It shouldn't be the finance committee. There's, there's plenty of other people responsible for, for taking this on. And maybe our job is to spur those other people to say, mm -hmm. you, you've got to straighten this up. Mm -hmm. you, this, this, we should not be paying over, jumping over capital planning facilities to do these things. And as Brian says, it's, 
if there's an emergency, we can handle those things. Um, and I, 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 there is a lack of specificity in the in the I as could well. say that and word, I, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what but anyway, we have we have two motions: a motion to um, fund them at twenty thousand. Which, um, unless there are more questions or comments, I'll take that first. And if it loses, then we'll I'll take a vote for the full twenty-five. Um, sorry, any other, you, Rebecca? Sorry, could you just clarify the vote process? Then? We'll vote on Charlie's first. Okay, and so then if the twenty thousand is passed, we're finished. Shouldn't we do the other round? That if the twenty-five thousand fails, we'll go for the twenty thousand. <clears throat> I think the twenty-five thousand yeah. is going to fail. I mean, happy birthday. I, I need to go with Charlie's first. Mm -hmm. okay. and but I don't want to vote against it. <laughs> so that's the problem. <laughs> What's that? I don't want to vote against it to get to the twenty-five. I mean, I'll vote for twenty or twenty-five. That's why I'm suggesting higher All right, we're voting on a motion to appropriate twenty thousand to the Disability Commission. All right, everyone understand that. Any other questions? So All right. We vote for the 20. Right. And it passes. We don't get a chance to vote for the 25. All right. <laughs> All in favor of appropriating 20,000, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Against. Just abstain. I'm abstaining. I'm not All against right. it. I just want the 25. All right. <laughs> Who's abstaining? Raise your hand. One. Can't two. change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Sophie's changed. So it's 11. Raise your hand for abstaining. One, two, three, four. All right. So the motion passes, passes 11, four, zero against, and four abstaining. So we've appropriated 20,000. That means it's a unanimous vote. Yeah. The percentage doesn't count. Well, we like should call it a unanimous vote, and then those of us who are staying will be there. All right. My <laughs> suggestion would be Sophie, you, you've been um, helpful in being the, our liaison. We can have a conversation with them. And I, my suggestion would also be in preparing for next year's budget. Maybe having a talk with Daryl on a capital plan before so that um, that they need money for facilities or capital, it should be, we should anticipate that. Charlie and Canal. What I heard from Christine Bongiorno is that uh, the planning department actually <laughs> makes these recommendations. Yeah, right. So this may never have gotten to the finance, to the capital planning committee or the facilities right. department. Right. So, you know, I, I think that somehow the, man, the the town manager and the deputy town manager have to be communicated to in the decision. Yes. Because. Well, I communicated with them last year. Pardon? I communicated with them last oh. year. It's all one big pot of money. It doesn't matter where the money comes from. So. Well, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is that these, <laughs> these requests aren't getting passed. I don't, they're not getting past the. Uh, uh, planning board. Planning uh, department. He gave the same response. I mean, Christine got his response from him last year, which was, it's not a priority for any of these committees. You know, they'll have to wait two or three years. The commission says it's a priority now, so they spend the money. Okay, well, because like, well, money goes wrong. All right, uh, Al. I'd like to make a motion for $6,000 for the Burlington Historic District Commissions. Second. <laughs> All right, okay. all right, does everyone hear? Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of 6,000 for the Historic District Commission? Aye. 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 Raise your hand. Any opposed? All right, that's unanimous. Um, how about the opioid settlement funding? Paper. You want to rephrase that out? <laughs> um, do we have to vote re a recommended vote on this? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, did it uh, year. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I recommend a positive vote on appropriating the $148,000 or whatever it is. 
148.139.02, Article 52. Was there a second? Second. second. All right, any questions, Al? Well, I, I, I just don't, where does it get appropriated to? In the Warren Article. But, okay, I mean, I, I, I go back to like the cemetery fund mm -hmm. where there's an article to appropriate from the cemetery fund and then it's used as an offset in the cemetery department. I, I would like to see this used as an offset in some department. Well, you, you'd have to put the 148,000 someplace in revenues. Where? And yes, the uh, well, miscellaneous revenue. But where on, where's the offset go? But well, here's the appropriation so. and the, the revenues, I guess they've already received. Right, so this is, this is appropriating the revenues to some place, which to me feels like an offset to some budget. In other words, it's one-sided entry. Well, it could be health and human services. Right, so I, I, I don't know if it would satisfy you to have $140,000 offset to health and human services with so. an increase someplace in their budget to balance it. But yeah. I'm just, again, I'm looking for consistency and transparency. Where does this money, but we're, we're appropriating it from the receipts to someplace. Receipts of this someplace. year. Could be expended under the uh, town manager. Could, Could be. Like any other warrant article. Other warrant articles. Right? Yeah. 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 It's like any other warrant yeah. article, yeah. and it, it is, it is restricted to the town manager. Yeah. Yeah. The town manager, the town, is going to have to report how they spent the money back to the settlement fund and proves that they spent it as expected. Okay, I'll, I'll vote in favor of it, but it just seems to me to be a little bit obscure. The town meeting isn't really... Town meeting is voting to appropriate the money someplace for some reason, right? So we don't know anything about, which doesn't seem like it's. Don't we do that for other work articles? That's a question. No, no, they're they're not to that size, and for well, no, example, my size. example for cemetery yeah. fund, there's more articles to take money, appropriate money yeah. from the cemetery fund, and it's clear it's used as an offset. Yeah, it's no, money, I I I'm looking for that level of transparency. I'll, yeah, I'll vote for it, but but I'm. Well, I'm perhaps just, we should put something in our recommended vote. Okay, so um, let's think about what that might be. I mean, I think we need to vote to appropriate the funds, otherwise they can't spend them and they just sit there. Understood, it seems like a pair of appropriated here and then just, you just take your warrant article and, and play with it. Vote, say this is, where, that. This is where okay. it should go and it's to be received by the town from state that, of uh, But let's say if it goes to health and human services. To be extended under the direction of the town manager. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm just yeah. looking for consistency. Yeah. We'll need a. I think we need a significant comment. Yeah, because it, it has to reference the memo and the purpose of the funds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's right. Right. so let's. Oh, you guys like us just supplement, and strengthen, um, op you know, the yep. opioid from the state. So does that go to help with human services? To is everybody saying, well, or, you know, yeah, like, we know what it's supposed to do. Who's going to who's gonna actually write well, the checks? She said they were. Yes, I'm manager. Okay. Under the, yeah. under the so it, it says in the article, it says, um, the funding and prevention, harm reduction, treatment, and recovery programs as further detailed in the Massachusetts State Subdivision Agreement. So what the town can spend it on is defined. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just wondering to write the checks. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that has passed unanimously. All right. Yeah. Insurance budget. Okay. I know everybody should have got the materials this weekend and has studied them thoroughly. <laughs> but but not thoroughly enough to ask questions that I can't answer. <laughs> Surely not. Okay, so if we just take the cover page, it's it's pretty much identical. The, the new substitute page is pretty much identical to the old one. So if I start at the top of the page, um, workers comp, that stays the same. Medicare penalty stays the same. If anybody wants me to explain some of this, I will. The opt-out program, and that's where you know families can, you know, they, they get the insurance through their partner and they don't need to get it from us and we pay them for it. 
Uh, the elephant in the room is the insurance group health. <coughs> now, originally, this is going to go up 3.17%. We got the um, rates from the GIC in early, I think the first week in, in March. And they were, it was sort of interesting because the rates actually went up, I think 5.7% and one of them went up uh, 1.45 or something like that. And they ended up only going up 1.17%. So my first question to, to Karen uh, was why? And she gave me some interesting reasons because all these numbers come in and that's how much you know, average plans are going up, but that's not what depends on, uh, that's not what uh, drives the cost for us. It's where our people are in those individual plans. And we have seemed to have the fortunate circumstance that um, many of our employees choose the cheaper plans. Um, so um, that's the prime reason that it only went up 1.7%, which saved us a lot of money. Now, it turns out also we're having trouble filling positions. So we tend to carry a lot of vacancies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vacancies don't have to pay for health insurance. Right. The fiscal 23 budget, they admitted was very conservative, mm -hmm. which means my next question, of course, was, so you're planning to turn a fair amount of money back to free cash? Mm -hmm. And they said, yes. So it'll be interesting to see that. Now, the other thing, which was a good chunk of this, is they got the school lunch programs to actually pay um, through their user fees for the health insurance. So rather than the town paying for the health insurance, the users are paying for the health insurance. And that was about $170,000. So that was, you know, Sandy's been beating the that all grants and user fees are going to pay for health insurance. So that, those are the prime reasons why um, the group health, which like I guess says is the elephant in the, in the living room, uh, only went up 1.7%, which saved us a considerable amount of money. Now the group life, about the same. Uh, Medicare payroll tax, that's going up and it's going to go up a little bit each year until we're fully uh, Medicare. So all employees who have come on, I think since 1986, have to be on Medicare or have to pay Medicare. But all the employees before 1986, they don't have to. So every time one of they retire and we bring in a new person, our Medicare goes up. Right. So that'll be going up until we no longer have anybody on the town payroll from before 1986. Uh, what they do is they use a, th a three-year average. So they're doing it that way. Uh, flexible benefit program is about the same. Um, that's a GIC fee. Uh, and then the employee mitigation, um, that was done with the, when these were negotiated, the ability to join the GIC, um, thanks to the uh, prior prior governor, yeah. um, was taken away from the unions and the town basically could go right into the GIC itself, but they had to impact bargain with the unions. And so um, we had to maintain a fund um, these are out of pocket to cover out of pocket costs. We had to maintain a fund of, of at least two hundred thousand, sort of as a, to a certain degree out of the cash flow. And the fund had been going steadily down. And over the last two years, or this year and next year, uh, we had to, we're going to have to put money in uh, this fifty thousand. Um, okay, offsets. Um, I'll keep going. Unemployment compensation is uh, is about the same. Uh, now, most of these are premiums that you see an actual cost. 
property insurance is premium. It also includes vehicles. So it's not just property, it's, it's vehicles. Also, uh, the increase of 18,000 basically came from our insurance agent uh, recommendation. And that's about it. So uh, my recommendation is as printed uh, in the uh, substitute in the substitute version, 21,498,752 for group health insurance and liability insurance of 579.070. Second. Second. Any questions? Uh, Jennifer and then Al. Uh, so question with the offset. So that number has gone down, or, or so, sorry, the offset that was in the book is uh, 69.6585. And it's sorry, it's gone up, but it means a negative number. Um, what is the offset? The sewer offset or some other offset? I, I'm sorry, you're talking the offsets in yeah, the above offset. on that on group it's health. Just, it's just different than it is in the book. So, what is the offset? The book doesn't the have record. the school lunch or the ACE. Yeah, the uh, that was added. They added in school lunch. Right. Okay, so this, school oh, lunch. okay, yeah, you know, I'm just uh, so I thought the school lunch. Um, was affecting that are the group health didn't drop as much, but it's also. So you had, um, it was it was going up, and it was actually going down. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the change is the is the school. So the change to the school lunch affects both um, the group health insurance, the fifty seven oh four, and the offsets. Or, or is that not right? That's what I thought you'd said. No, I think. I think what he's saying is that the reason the offset went up and therefore the taxation budget is lower is okay. because okay. the so that's okay. paying their share. Right. Got it, got it. So then the, yeah. the decrease in the, in the increase for the, um, for the group health is all about the earlier stuff you talked about, people choosing lower plans or yeah. choosing a partner's plan or something like that. Yeah. Okay, um, then just one more question. So the employee mitigation, were you saying that that is a fund that we, we fund, or is the fifty thousand what we expect we're going to spend each year? It, this was a, a fund that was set up with the original negotiations to cover yeah. out-of-pocket costs yeah, for employees. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, it, it said that it could go no longer than lower than two hundred thousand. Okay, so there's a pot of money. Somewhere. This is mm -hmm. okay. So make sure it stays above yeah. two hundred thousand. Great. Thanks. Okay. Mark Jones. Okay, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to clarify that the, the so the, the cost of insurance hasn't changed, but we're charging back both the school lunch, which is ninety seven thousand dollars, and our IP community had the same thing, which is seventy four thousand dollars. So the hundred four hundred and seventy is oh, the school lunch. It's split up right. mm -hmm. parts community yeah. ed, part of school lunch. Yeah. Yep. Charlie? Yes, thank you. I, so Al, didn't uh, uh, Karen mention that in uh, in the insurance group health program, there was a merger between two providers. Um, uh, Thompson Harbor Pilgrim. Thompson mm -hmm. Harbor Pilgrim. That's and right. And it turns out that if we, if we were if most of our employees were in one, the insurance rates would have gone up. But we were fortunate, and they were in the other plan, mm -hmm. so the rates went down. It benefited from the merger. Mm -hmm. That's my recollection. John. Um, I just want to point out one thing. So on the workers' comp, so it looks like it's staying the same, 580 last year, 580 this year, and there's a nice memo that explains why it's staying the same. Uh, interesting, in the memo, it mentions that that workers' comp covers all town employees, including the schools, but it doesn't cover police and fire. And um, I just kind of want to note that um, way back when, when we spoke with the chief at the fire department, he noted that... Um, I think it was like a thirty thousand, maybe even more, thirty or forty thousand uh, dollar invoice that he had to pick up in his department related to a retired firefighter, uh, just incurring some medical bills, and uh, he just wanted to make sure I we passed along. I think I did pass along, but way back when when we were doing the fire presentation, and to me it seems like it's a little bit of a hole in the system. Like, should, like who's picking up the workers' comp for the firefighters and the police? I don't know, but. I just wanted to come. I was a little wondering yeah. about that too because we have a Warren article actually in here um, that covers 
So this is last year. Um, miscellaneous appropriations, and that covers indemnification of medical costs for police and fire. So I wasn't quite sure why it was in the fire budget, unless it was particularly large. I can never, I because this yeah. money, this amount of money has never been above. It's always been like eight to twelve thousand okay. in this Warren article. Um, yeah. And they have to go through all their other insurances before they can come here. So I was going to ask that question. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I, yeah, I'm not quite sure why it was on the fire budget. Yeah, it was above twelve grand, so maybe that's just the size of the road then. Okay. Uh, just to help you out. Yeah. The police and fire have do not have workman's compensation. Compensation. Yeah. They have what they call line of duty, and basically what happens is. If someone goes out line of duty, they receive full salary. They, it's, so it's not a reduced like what it's called. And that full salary is tax exempt until they come back from their injury. So that, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's good inspiring. And, 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 and just sorry. listening to you speak, I think I'm kind of maybe connecting through the dots. So you're describing lost salary, whereas what I was, the, what we were talking about with the chief was actually a medical bill. So, and what happened was there was a retiree, a long, yeah, a fellow who retired years ago, yeah. And he, and he applied for a disability because he, he claimed the injury was while he was working. And, it, and that was in the rules in his favor. That's why it came out of the fire budget. Got it. If they had not ruled in his favor, he would have lost. Okay. Okay. There's a line that and every once in a that happens. Doesn't happen routinely. It just one a great while. Um, sometimes you some of these rulings you say get rid of the yeah platform. pretty rare. Got it. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Al. Uh, just so I understand, so the, the GIC basically sets the rates for, for us, right? We don't really have any control. It's like the group insurance commission. They set the rates for the plans. Plans. Yeah. Okay. And so this is basically the town of Arlington's share. But that doesn't also, so the employees themselves are also paying some portion of this. Yeah, in other words, they have to decide which employees and which plan at what pay, and literally for two or three weeks, go down and do that. Um, and as they say in the carpentry world, you know, measure twice, cut once. It, it's, uh, um, it takes a while. I just also want to add when the town went to the GIC, I'm not I'm not sure, but I believe the savings was like nine million dollars a year. It was like the street lights, it was, which it was, was so out of control. You know, and then it just like fell into nothing. Now this is obviously rising from when it, it from what it was. I believe it originally started out about 12, 13 million dollars a year 10 years ago. Yeah, so we got a three million dollar reset. And we had been budgeting seven percent a year for health insurance, and always ending up paying more, and therefore eating other budgets. And since we went into the GIC, we have never had, as far as I know, a seven percent increase in insurance for health insurance specifically. So that was the advantage of being out of the GIC. Um, and then I believe that the employees could come back every time we do their contract and say they want to argue us out of the GIC. They didn't want to go into the GIC, but they've never come back and said, we want to be bargaining this. So I think it's turned out to be a really good deal. Well, I mean, their argument was the, the out-of-pocket costs issue because they no longer be able to bargain the plan design, which was the out-of-pocket costs. And hence the fund that we were putting money in to cover some of those out-of-pocket costs. Um, and they had some real concerns about employees who at the time were very, very sick. At the time, yes. At the time, yes. Now, no. Yeah. So, um, anyways, it, it's turned out to be a really good deal and helped us a lot. Dave? I, I just, I think there's only been two municipalities that have opted out of the GIC yeah. in the time the GIC is allowed yeah. to go into. There's, been a lot of there's, there's yeah. only been two. Yeah. For whatever reason, I don't know. Yeah. So, you had. Um, Alex had a motion. Was it seconded? Sorry. Sorry, one quick follow-up question. It's been seconded, correct? Or, or <laughs> do I have a second? All right, Shane. 
the the reason I ask about the who pays which share is that set by statute or is that part of collective bargaining? Uh, you know, that was by collective bargaining, um, except for retirees. And many years ago, the the, uh, the selectmen at the urging of the finance committee and putting together our whole plan uh, to fund the OPEB on um, that. The uh, non certain plans used to be 90-10, and they went to 85-15. And every time we fund money for OPED, you see one line item with 155,000. Probably should modify that at some point, but that that's came from there. So that one, retirees are set by the board of selectmen unless the legislature decides to take it away for a year, which they sometimes do. And I think all of the rest is by collective bargaining. Oh, yeah, I'm just thinking about subsequent years if that becomes a subject of bargaining, that number, if the, if the rate goes up, but then we're bargaining on a, a higher proportion from the town. Yeah, we, 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 they they can bargain on the split, yeah. but it has not question. been contentious okay. in, since we went into the GIC. I think because they got the reset, so they got a reset on their split. Right. And then they got, you know, it has not gone up dramatically. And so it hasn't been to their advantage to bargain on the split. They'd have to give something up. So, uh, any more questions? Right. I just, um, the, the presence for, for, for employees on the health insurance is 75 25. Mm -hmm. um, and that was negotiated. All, all the bargaining units, including the teachers. So any new employee coming in when they did that, 75, 25, any employee that was on before, it stayed at 85, 15 for a while, and then um, and it was originally 90, 10. So now any employees, I'd say the majority of employees in the town is 75, 25. How, however, <laughs> if they would, if the town would want to negotiate to, to lower that, say the 60, 40, there's been a town bylaw and it went in in 1974 that says you, you can't go lower than 75, 25 without a vote of town meeting. Mm -hmm. And that, that's so that's something that I'll bet you none of these people that work here now know that. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's an old, but that's it. So it's 75, 25. I'd say for probably, pro, I'd say probably 99% of the current. So you can imagine the complexity of not only you know what plan that they want, but what union are they in? And there's seven, there's fifteen eighty five, there's eighty twenty, and there's seventy five twenty fives. So uh, you could imagine this is a huge headache yeah. um, to figure out. But they do a good job. Any more questions? Sorry, just one more question. So I know if somebody goes on to their part, a partner's plan somewhere else, mm -hmm. they get extra money, mm -hmm. right? Where does that come from? Uh, so, so somebody um, decides to not use our plan, health plan, and they go on to like a fastest plan in some other place. Yeah, I think so that's we the get next program. What? The up the up oh, oh, okay. down. Oh, okay. That's what Third one down. Thank you. Okay. Got it. That's where it comes from. Yeah. Any other questions? The bigger that number gets, the more money you save. Right. I know, right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for a vote? All right. All in favor of um, the Group health insurance amount of 21498752 and the liability insurance amount of 5790070. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. All right. So all, all in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in favor, zero opposed, and one abstention. All right. All right, um, quickly, we have to rebuild the pension budget because we are $140 off. <laughs> so, Grant, did you say that that was all set? Um, yeah, it was actually corrected. Um, oh, okay. In the revised, um, we tabled the vote, and then the revised vote, I believe, is the accurate number. Yeah. My mistake was the note I wrote 
It says $400. It must have been Zoom meeting that we did that because I wrote a note saying $400. But so what do you say? Offset, check it, Charlie, 400 different. So, so it was my mistake. It, uh, we voted the correct amount for the um, retirement budget. Okay. Come on. Okay, so Julie's email at 11.55 this morning as well. And uh, what? Sorry? Julie, Julie sent an email this morning saying that the pension budget was 140 more than it should have been. It was a number that was in her original email. Yes, yes, she said she took care of it months, uh, a month ago or so. Because yeah. we cut it by 140. Right. So that's right. Yes, it's correct. That, yeah, I was looking at February 27 minutes and it said we tabled it and I yeah. finally looked at the next minutes meet, the meeting later. I actually even think I asked you what the offset was, number was in the meeting too, if I'm not mistaken. But I just wrote a note, so I just misread the note. All right, so check one of the card numbers, just to make sure I don't know. The ones we voted on. Um, one, it's revised, but we voted on it. It's not the one in the book. The, the book that should, the, the amount that it should be, according to Julie, as of 11.55 this morning, is $14,133,735. Okay. Is that what you have? That's what I want to make sure. All right. I'm going to have to re rebuild that. Um, all right. I want to stop at 9.30 to start talking about the override, but between now and then, can we do composting? Yeah. Sure. Do you want to do the whole... The whole um, just composting or the whole trash? No, I just wanted to the warrant article composting. Oh, oh, the warrant yeah. yeah. Do you want a motion or do you want to have discussion first? I want a motion. I um, move approval of four thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars to fund a pilot program to encourage restaurants. There a second. Oh, second. Second. All right. Discussion. Okay. We just came up with five thousand dollars by reducing another budget. <laughs> so what the heck? They aren't even out of balance. So four thousand nine hundred and ninety-two is what they asked for. I rounded up to five thousand just because otherwise it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Annie, I ask many people are not supposed to round eight up. Eight bucks, eight bucks. <laughs> You're wasting money. <laughs> There's an override coming, you know? Oh my God, $8 is going to be different. All right, okay. any, any, any discussion? Charlie. So I think those uh, students did a fantastic job. And my, my concern here is that they're subsidizing businesses <laughs> to do what they should be doing. Uh, there must be a better way to do this. I'm not trying to not give the students the funds, but I've, the idea of subsidizing businesses is to me, first of all, the subsidy that they're going to get out of that $5,000 is probably not meaningful in the, in the scope of their business. So, you know, maybe we should ask that if, is this going to go to uh, the DPW department? Is that what it's I think inevitably it will. I, I think before time, if the students themselves are going to have to do some work to find out whether or not the DPW is willing to take it on. Because if they're not, then they're going to fail at time meeting anyways, whether we give them money or not. But so, so what, what are, if, if, we, if we really want to support these mm -hmm. kids, not to be majority, but these young these students, mm -hmm. um, in and the composting is beneficial to the town. It's probably going to be required by state law eventually anyway. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we appropriate the money to the, or a recommended appropriation to the DPW to be used by this group for uh, advertising and promotion of the program, as opposed to giving anything directly to businesses. Because you know, any business in town should say, well, I could get a little slice of the taxpayer's dollar because I do good things, you know. And I think um, it's, it's 
it's not a good precedent for us to undertake. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I think the language we usually use is to be expended under the direction of the town manager. And, you know, he would shift, he would shift it off there. Um, so this was working with restaurants to get their used food into compost. Yes. Oh, uh, the, the company uh, Food Link, which is right up here on Summer Street, yeah. they do a lot of work to, with restaurants, I think, to get yeah, edible food. Yeah, right. it's edible yeah. food. This yeah. is not that. Yeah. No. Yeah. This is the stuff they have to throw out, the stuff yeah. you leave on your plate, et cetera. Yeah, okay. That's all. Um, Grant? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, can I can uh, appreciate you don't want to subsidize, so to speak, town subsidizing restaurants. It is a pilot program. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's some way you can sunset that or something like that in the, in the real program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so they indicated in their presentation that the law that just went into effect says that if a business has half of a ton per week, what was it, half a ton a week um, of compostable or organic waste that they have to send it to compost. But orally, they seem to suggest that this is going to drop to a quarter of a ton a week. Yeah, and they sent Dean Thomas member, actually. Yeah, and so Dean, it was, a, it was a, we don't a prediction to the law now. Prediction. I see. Right. I see. Yeah. Um, because if that's the case, if it's if it's going to be, I mean, I agree that this is a big problem. I certainly agree that they did a fantastic job. But if it's going to be the case that the state is going to require most businesses to do it, and sort of at the same time we're having to renegotiate our trash contracts and so forth, this doesn't affect that. Yes, unless as part of the trash contract, you want to say, well, how much do businesses pay? Any, but, any, let, um, let's let's break it down. So. So I worry a little bit if they're about to have within the next few years a mandate that they have to compost it. How does the subsidy fit in? Because then, is everyone expect to be subsidized after they've been told they have to do it, or do we just stick with the sixteen that we have? I guess I'm a little concerned about how that fits in. Thank yeah, you. Other, other, Carolyn, and then Al. It's a one-year pilot, so they're only asking for it for one year. Um, the the drop to a quarter in five years. Dean has worked in, in restaurants his entire adult life. Um, and so he was the one who said it used to be a ton. Now it's half a ton. I'm telling all the restaurants that, you know, through the professional organizations, it's going to drop to a quarter in about five years. Um, we have to do our contract in two years. So this is, this is sort of a one-off as a way to get um, get some awareness, get um, more awareness through the town about it, um, get the town more used to composting as a factor. Um, and so it shouldn't, the restaurants are either going to pick it up on their own after that year, because they may actually save money in the process, even if they go back up to the 10%. They may find that they're, they're actually saving a little bit of money because their trash cost has dropped. Um, so they may find like, oh, this was a really good pilot and we found this and then 30 more restaurants jump on board, you know? Or they may find, well, we're willing to pay the extra 10% because of X, Y, or Z. Um, so that's, their attitude was it's a one year pilot. This is what it costs. This is what it could do for the town um, at a lot of different levels. And some of that is just a town awareness. Al? You know, the reason I'm so comfortable voting for this is that I don't even look at it as a composting incentive. This is like the best educational investment we could ever make. These kids learned about science. They learned about, they learned about economics. They learned about management. They have to convince the restaurants to do it. I'd put it in the school budget. I mean, it, it, it's like, it really, it's like, second. <laughs> second. Totally comfortable doing it. And they'll take it. It's a good thing. You know, and, 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 you know, instead of follow it through for the next three years through 10th grade, it's just a wonderful thing. And, and that's why I'm just really comfortable and enthusiastic about voting for it. Grant. Thank you. Um, again, so these limits of a half a ton, is it half a ton a year or half a ton a, a week? A week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A 
looked up a lot. It was one time in 2014, so half a time in 2022. Okay. And you wouldn't have any idea what a restaurant? According to their presentation, average is 600, which is a little over a quarter time. A week. A week. Mm -hmm. that, that's the average, but they don't know. I mean, that's the, the, the median. Cost. That's the average across most in most restaurants. restaurants. They didn't they survey didn't every restaurant in Arlington. They didn't. They, this is they didn't a, this survey is a any? general. They didn't survey. They didn't survey. This is a general any sort of industry. So no one knows. Okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah. No one knows actually. But any of these names of pilots that the restaurants were volunteering, they may not have to do this. We don't know how much they use the corner pizza. I don't, we don't even like to use. So it may not apply. Um, again, bigger restaurants, they may not be in the pilot. Yeah. So I, I mean, we don't really know enough on that, to, but that's why it's a pilot. So yeah. that's why I want to point out that we don't know what, we know the info of what these restaurants use. We don't, don't know what they exceed, we know what the average does, but you know, that's like the normal child. So that's my point. We don't really know what a quarter uh, or even half a pound, half a ton relates to the town restaurants. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, this is one meeting I've missed. How, are the, how is the stuff actually going to be picked up? Who's going to do it? Black Earth. Black Earth. Okay. So, so they, right now, they have a, the amount that they um, based all their information on is Black Earth. Um, and Black Earth, the process includes having the um, waste barrel, offering the waste barrel to the restaurant. So the restaurant doesn't have to buy the, sorry, the compost barrel. Um, and it, it also includes the tipping fee. So all the restaurant has to do is find room for the compost barrel and make sure it's ready to be picked up when the time it's supposed to be picked okay. up. Thank you. And the compost barrel is rat, um, approved, rat, -proof. rat proof. Brian. If I'm not mistaken, too. I mean, we we're investing five thousand dollars. We don't have to go over that if you don't want to. Well, that's a one-day yeah. yeah. So it's not like it's um, any real exposure from that. Okay. So I apologize for my naivete. What is the tipping fee? <laughs> that's the pickup fee. Tip, tip, tip. Oh, no, it's it's actually, it's actually to tip the thing. Oh, okay. 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 That's, that's, what to sure. that's what they cost. <laughs> that's the cost of Pauline in a way. Sophie. Did they, I, I missed the presentation as well. Are we going to get a report at the end of it? I mean, is the town going to benefit from this pilot program of having usable data that's going to inform us of something? Oh. I, I believe so. Based on the presentation they made, okay. I think their town's going to get better data on this program than they get on most. <laughs> well, we, can, we can add that to the vote. That yeah. We will we give them as long as they return with the report. Right. That yeah. we see yeah. something that's kind of yeah. <laughs> Also, because I'm trying to recruit these kids for the finance committee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, comes to back. Uh, so, for the... so just really interestingly, we went to them saying, there's no way finance can can't give you a dime. <laughs> and there's just a statement like, you know, be so good that you, they can't ignore you. And that's what they did. Um, I, I do think that they see this as potentially more than a one-year pilot. That doesn't mean that we have to see that way. But I think that they were thinking of it as a three to four year until other things kick in in town. Um, but, you know, we can see how it goes. It's possible they don't spend 5000 this year because it's based on 17 restaurants and maybe they don't get 17 restaurants to know up. Um, I do see, besides the educational value of what's happening to the students, there is a general education value in the town at large in this kind of um, talking to restaurants, talking to customers, talking to town meeting that I think has a lot of value. Okay, just a couple more questions and then we'll go take it to a vote, Carolyn. So uh, Charlie and I got together after this, and I brought up the fact that I'm in a building with 75 units. Al is in a very large building too. Now we can't do this with units, you know, buildings that are large, because then every unit has to have one of those little compostable containers, and that's another five dollars. And the other issue with that, if we were to ask them to make a shift to that, is that. Um, Right now, we can't even get the people in our building to um, recycle properly. So the idea of making sure that they weren't throwing trash and they weren't throwing meat products or fish products or poultry products into the compost 
um, would be tricky. However, I see that coming down the pipe pretty quickly, um, particularly for buildings like the size of the one I'm in. Um, and so this is a way to sort of start looking at what those issues are. And they had information about what it's what the composting is like at the schools, which we're already doing, and the issues that they're facing there. Just to start. Anything further? Any other questions, comments? All right, we have a motion for five thousand dollars, and it's been seconded. Correct. Yes. All right. All in favor? Raise your hand. Aye. <laughs> I don't think well, so. No. Did you get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. He said no, no, any <laughs> All right, unanimous. Wow. Did you want me to include something <laughs> about them needing to include a report? <laughs> um, yes. 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 Send it as a report manager. Um, um, yeah. 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 All right. Um, we have a little over 20 minutes left. I want to talk about the state, the status of the, the override. Um, and I'll start in those, um, Al Jones and Annie, who has stayed along in plenty, you can add uh, jump in, and I know Al Tosti and Charlie were also um, watching um, our meeting, the Long Range Planning Committee meeting on Friday. So after the election, um, the select board will convene to vote to put an override on the ballot in June. Um, it looks right now that the amount, although I'm uncomfortable that there's been a certainty of it, um, is the, it, it seems like the town manager is going to recommend an override in the amount of um, seven million dollars, and um, in addition to just um, keeping um, operations um, as it has been with a three point five percent increase on the school side and the three point two five percent increase on the town side. Most of the bulk of this override money will be going to the schools to help um, fund their um, new initiatives, but mostly it will be to in an attempt to increase teacher salaries. So the numbers that the school department wants is uh, one, and correct me, Al, I'm wrong, it's one million in, 24, 3.1 million in 25, 1.7 million in 26, and then 600,000 and 300,000. The town manager wants uh, $650,000 for um, uh, the town side, additions on the town side, and that would include uh, let's see. he wants two hundred thousand for roads and sidewalks. He wants to hire an engineer in DPW for to handle help handle gas leaks in town. Children's librarian, maybe a dispatch supervisor, and he also wants to make the ARPA community. Engagement coordinator, um, which is currently funded by ARPA money, a permanent position funded by um, money. Um, we we will have a very sizable deficit. This will be a three-year override with the expectation there will be a very sizable deficit. Um, in year four and going forward, which uh, there is no plan to address. Uh, and that those deficit numbers also provide nothing in terms of any additional money or contingency for solid waste or when our contract comes up. Um, so I have concerns about um, the 
failure to have anything but, I think uh, Al Jones used the word correctly, wishful thinking about what will happen at the end of three years. Um, um, so I just want, um, you know, Al and Annie, I want you to add your two cents in and you know, Al Tosh and Charlie to Al Jones. Um, the main concern I have is very macro. It's not micromanaging positions or you know prayers or anything. But when we're looking at doing something now in three years, it leads to you know according to plan, maybe a twenty million dollar override, a twenty two million dollar override. That sounds to me you know one sense pushing the can down the road or you know heading for a cliff. I'm not doing anything about it. So you know why. You know, suggested was well, okay, and then when I say that, well, there's 17 million, and then then you always get well, but we the GIC happened, and that was a you know windfall, and there's this windfall, and these things happen, and, and then ARPA it was ARPA money came in, and the state had really good state aid, and and that to me is that's really nice, but thinking that we're going to get that with this, you know, something of the same magnitude in the same three years is what I think is wishful thinking. I don't like plans based on wishful thinking. So, you know, making a plan that leads to what I believe is an untenable override again in three years isn't a good plan. So, you know, simplistically, I what, what I suggested was, you know, so if we have an override, we go to the voter and say, well, this will be the last override for at least three years. I'd like to add to that for at least three years, and the next one won't be higher than 5% or pick a number. You know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's not planning seven generations ahead, but it's at least looking a couple overrides in advance. So we're not intentionally heading towards a cliff and saying, well, I hope something really good happens. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. So that, that's my objection. Again, that's a very high level one without going into, you know, questioning positions or headcount or things like that. I, as we discussed during the school budget, um, and as John was pointing out, we, we were adding positions. Uh, pretty, at a pretty good clip on both sides of the you know, town side and school side, but anyway, the school side, um, which just continues to bake in our expenses going forward. Um, and I'm troubled with here we are um, facing an override and where we anticipate adding new people, additional people. And I that. Again, without the thought of well, then what happens um, is this concern. Annie, you want to add oh, to the conversation? So I want to add a couple things to the conversation. So the first thing I want to add is that the major ask here on the part of the schools is to be able to bargain in good faith with our teachers. Our teachers are currently paid less than fifty percent of what the average, I think it's the average, of the town being 12, which are the towns we compare ourselves to are paying their teachers. Their request here is for the money to put in a bargaining pool to be able to get their teachers up to 50%. Their ambition was 65% median, but they're asking for 50%. Yeah. Because of water time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have towns around us that are paying much better. And the effect of that is um, that we we have we don't we either can't retain teachers, okay. And in particular, if you think about how this works in business, you get someone in who say they come to work for you for the first two, three, four, five years, okay, and then they want to either be closer to home for our teachers because they can't afford to live in town or they can get a higher salary elsewhere. They now have experience. They're taking everything they learned from us. All of that first couple of years of getting their feet under them, they're taking it to another community. And it also means that when we're hiring, we have this difficulty of not being able to make the offer that actually gets the good teacher that we want to hire. So it's a lot about the contract. Um, I understand it's a big chunk of money, okay, but I think that the school department did a pretty good job of presenting to us what I would call a plan, which is that they sat down and thought about values and priorities and they have some goals and they said this is where we're going in five years. Okay. Um, it is true that, it, that, that $17 million in 2027 is a big cliff, 
and because it's then followed by an increasing deficit, we have, you know, um, uh, we're looking at an override that would be bigger than that if that $17 million holds up. We now have 18 years of experience with this kind of planning, and we have never passed an override projecting a number that was going to be what we were going to spend or, or what the deficit was going to be three, four, or five years later, where that number held up. It's always less. Part of that is we're very conservative about our revenue projections. And so our revenues always come in higher than expected. We roll it into free cash, then we have a bigger pool. That free cash stretches our stabilization funds. I don't know of a way to project that other than to be less conservative about our revenue assumptions, which I don't think any of us want to do. Uh, so I wouldn't say we don't, we, we are exactly facing a cliff without a plan, but if we're facing a cliff without a plan, it's because a financial projection is not a plan. So the question is, if you want to avoid $17 million, then what do you want to do? We have to start reducing our expenses now. Which expenses do you want to reduce? And I understand the schools are asking to add money, but even if we take the school's money and we don't add it, it doesn't solve our problem. We're still facing an override in the future, and we still don't have a plan to live on 2.5%. Part of the reason we don't have a plan to live on 2.5% is because we can't. We have many expenses we have no control over that go up more than 2.5% a year. So overrides are our fate going into the future. We, unless we decide that what we want to do is we want to allow a great deal more housing density in town and therefore gain the kind of growth that, for example, means that Waltham has never had an override or a budget cut. And their teachers pay 7% of their health care premiums, not 15 or 20 or 25. So um, that's kind of my counter argument. Obviously, I feel it's worth making the investment in the schools. I would also point out that you know, this is a question for the citizens of the town. So for us to say, we are not gonna support this ask, is for us to say, we don't trust the citizens to know what they want. So hence, I am supporting this override because I think this is the ask we have to make. And we're either going to pass that override or not. And if we don't pass that override, then we're gonna to have to adjust our thinking and come back with a different question. Or optionally, I, and I've never understood why we don't do this, we do a manual override and we say, here's how much we need to sustain town services and add these things, and here's how much we need to meet the goals of the schools, and we let the citizens decide whether or not they want to support that aspect of the schools. So we have options for that. But, um, all right, that's, yeah, that's my more voices. Not, uh, yes, it is ultimately the voters' decision, but the voters will be looking at finance to make for some direction. Al, and then Brian. Okay, I um, I was going back and forth. I've never failed to support an override or a debt exclusion in the past. Um, I've led debt exclusions. Charlie's led debt exclusions. Um, but but this, um, if this was just a seven million dollar override to build up the, so we have a a smaller one down the road, I think I could support that. But there's an old Chinese proverb. I'm not sure if it's a Chinese proverb, but all they seem to get good press. <laughs> if you dig yourself into a hole, the first quite, first lesson is stop digging. We're, you know, those who are long-term plan projection. Thank you. Um, we're digging ourselves into quite a hole. I mean, we're talking deficits of 17, 18, 20 million, 23 million dollars. Um, that's getting huge. We've never gone for an override greater than 10% of our property wealth. And I think to continue to add spending to it just keeps the deficit growing and we're going to be, you know, in real trouble. The thing that did it for me was the school budget presentation the other day. You know, everybody's got to make decisions on how they want to spend their money. So they had a line up there and it said, okay, here's, we have $4.8 million of, of spending. I think the one is that. But we have to spend this for, for you know, uh, COLA and, and uh, steps and lanes. 
we have to spend this for contract, this for this. And then we found savings of about 1.1 million, which is great. And so they totaled those and they got, we have $2.8 million. And we did this whole public thing and we came up with all the things. These are things we want to add into this budget. Well, they made that decision. If they really thought that employee salaries were key and critically important, then they shouldn't be spending $2.8 million on more, on more programs and staff. They should be somehow setting this aside for a long-term plan to pay their employees more. Uh, and, and that really did it for me. And then besides Alan saying about a cliff, everything is projected upon good news for the next five years. And I have no idea what's gonna grow, what's gonna be going on in the economy. Uh, we haven't had a good walloping recession for quite a while. And when the, uh, when the recession hits, the first thing the state does is start cutting local aid. It just, you know, they have to do it. So I would support the override if it's just $7 million period to help support, to eliminate these deficits. To, spend, to have a $7 million override and then spend it all for new programs makes no sense to me. So. Brian and then Charlie. Uh, Al's stealing my thunder, but basically it's voodoo economics at its best. Uh, I don't understand when you're facing deficits that you said, oh, let's spend an extra seven million that we don't have. It doesn't add up. Um, I can tell you that the override when it finally hits and maybe in four years, I don't think it'll be in three, but it could be because uh, just because everything we do is conservative here. We're budgeting, money's turned back to the town. But when that when that comes and you wanted to have a five year budget going out, you're going to be looking for $30 million a year. That's, and that, it's just, that'll never pass. So you're just dooming the town. If you have the 7 million and you're spending it, if you're putting it in the piggy bank, it's a different story. Charlie. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> a couple of general comments, and I agree with most of the comments that have been made Except for Amy's. Of course. <laughs> um, so, one question in my mind is Is the Arlington Finance Committee a rubber stamp operation or does it actually think for itself? Now, Andy said that it's the citizen's decision, implying that it's not our decision. I agree. Whether this override goes forward or not is, is a decision of the Board of Selectmen, whether it gets put up or not. And it's a decision of the citizens to whether they vote for it or not. But the citizens look to guidance from the Finance Committee. And they deserve guidance from the Finance Committee. So we should evaluate this on its merits and make a decision as a committee as to whether we should support it or not support it. That's my first point. Without any changes or additional uh, expenditures, we have a deficit in uh, fiscal 26 of $9 million. The, the, proposed, the proposed changes by, by the, the town manager, I, I can't tell whether the Long Range Planning Committee supported it or not, but this, the proposed changes that the town manager is threatening to recommend to the Board of Selectmen add up to um, about $7.8 million additional spending over the, the, the five-year period. It's going to have a cost of an increase in the first year of $464 to the average household uh, tax bill, which is, represents about a 4.5% increase. And that's going to rise each year with the normal, normal progression. And the total incremental spending over that five-year period that has been presented is $27.6 million. As far as I'm concerned, that's a big number. And I think the Finance Committee should be thinking about what we're going to tell the citizens of this town, we think about spending another $27.6 million. Now, I understand the question of teacher pay. Our teachers are paid less than the average of the 12 towns. But the, so nobody has delved into why that is and what it means. The, the superintendent the other night said that, you know, teachers come here and they work and they get to a certain age and they have want to have a family and they can't afford to live in this area. So they 
and they move out, they have more space, and they want to work somewhere close to close to their their uh, home. Giving them this raise is not necessarily going to change that. It has absolutely no no effect. If somebody has a bigger family and they want to move out to uh, Stowe or something like that, they're going to do that whether they get a raise or not. I also have looked at the correlation of teacher salaries with MPS results. The town that, that has the lowest MPS results and the highest teacher salaries is Boston. If you compare, I, I, I compared uh, Winchester, um, Waltham, Watertown, Arlington, Belmont, and Lexington. And as far as the MPS results are concerned, Lexington always comes out on top, no matter what. But in, the, in that small set of towns in, in Boston, there is no correlation between teacher salaries and NPS results. We, in, in all cases, our students are in the top, I don't know, one, two, or three in, in, the, in that set of towns. And in some cases, Winchester might have crept ahead of us, but usually we're behind Lexington. So, I'm not convinced that this teacher pay argument is that compelling. I'm not saying that the teachers couldn't be paid more, but I would follow Christine's suggestion that says, instead of spending money on other programs or other things, let's let's use the money that's in the budget. I mean, I pointed out to them last, last week that they actually increased the payroll categories without touching the teachers by 13% in the budget that they presented to us. Now, you know, they have all sorts of arguments as to why they would do that but they did not address teacher salaries. So I wanted to make one or two other comments here. Um, and that is that the, uh, I looked at the tax growth in Arlington over the last uh, five years from uh, 2018 to 2023. It averages 5.1% a year. And the proposed override is gonna increase that by 4.5%. So, you know, that's, I think, getting to be an extremely high increase in our taxes. From 2012 to 2022, including the recent increase in inflation, the, the average inflation rate is 2.44%. So we're spending much more than the average inflation rate. And, you know, I, at one time, a week or two ago, I heard Andy say that, um, you know, the 2.5% of Proposition 2.5 is an arbitrary number. It's not an arbitrary number. It's the number of the average inflation over many decades. So we, we're saying to ourselves, we, we should be spending more than the average inflation. In the face of all this, for the town manager 12 towns, I looked at, and this is all, by the way, data that's on the, on the uh, state website. I looked at uh, what the per capita income growth was over the past, even the period 2014 to 19 or 2017 to 23. There's, there's two different databases for that. So I looked at both of them. Uh, Arlington is, the, the income per capita growth in Arlington is, is a little bit below the middle. And our uh, compound growth every year is 3.8%. Is, uh, so we're raising taxes 5.1%. We have an inflation rate of 2%. And our per capita income is growing at 3.8%. And who knows what's going to happen in the, in the next couple of years. I think all the comments that the earlier speakers made about the their question about the programs. I mean, I I, I think they're all valid, and and uh, I certainly wasn't convinced that the school department should be spending, you know, another uh, twenty million dollars over the next incremental twenty million dollars over the next five years. And I think the town of Arlington is looking for guidance from the finance committee as to whether or not this is an appropriate program. That this increase in their taxes is the thing that we should do. So my firm suggestion is that we evaluate these costs and, and what we think the returns are, and then make a recommendation as a committee as to whether we support the override, the override and its uses or not support it. And if the town manager and, and the long range planning committee or whomever come back with a, <coughs> and if we don't support it, if they come back with a different plan, we can support, we can consider it. Thank you. Well, it's approaching 10 o'clock. Um, I think we could have this conversation another two hours if we wanted to. Um, and, and I'll try to 
find some time on Wednesday to continue this discussion. Um, also on Wednesday, hopefully we'll finish DPW and facilities and I already and then Grant. Are you ready for one no. sort? We can do it now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. All right. So we'll do uh, finish the last budgets. Um, then I think we can look through some of the Warren articles. Um, and then um, uh, if I have any more information about the override, I'll convey that. We can talk about some more um, once we night. Uh, we'll be meeting next Monday, but we will be not be meeting next Wednesday because of the Jewish holiday. Okay. Um, and hopefully we won't have to need to meet then. So, um, so, but let's try to get a lot, of, a lot of stuff done on Wednesday. Anything remaining on Monday, and I think that'll be good. Okay. All right. We still haven't voted. Uh, oh, um, Tara won't be here on Wednesday, and it'd be greatly appreciated if someone could volunteer to do some minutes. I will help with minutes, but if someone could just sort of. Sophie, you're wonderful. God bless you. <laughs> it will be very, very appreciated, and that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you very much.